Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Matt and this is the very first episode of my Link Shortener tutorial. In this tutorial we are going to use React.js, TypeScript, Next.js and we'll deploy our application to Vercel so we will not use any servers for the backend. And yeah, that's it. I don't know how long it will take. I think it will be between three episodes to six episodes. So between 30 to 60 minutes. Let's find out. Yeah. So for now, please hit the like button and subscribe and enjoy it. In this tutorial, we are going to build a simple link shortener. So basically user will be able to paste his link. He will press shorten. The system will generate a link for him. Users clicks it. He will be basically redirected to the right website. So what are we going to use to build this tutorial? To build our web app, we are going to use React, which is a simple library to build user interfaces. It was also the most popular library in 2020 in JavaScript. As a design system and component library, we are going to use Andy, which was built by a Chinese e-commerce called Alibaba. Andy offers a React component library, which makes building React apps, like connecting Lego blocks, so easy. We are going to use TypeScript as a static type checker, which makes JavaScript development so pleasant by checking the types of every single variable and constants. As a backend, we'll use Next.js, which enables front-end developers to make pull stack apps. But not the classic backend, instead of servers, we are going to use serverless. And finally, we are going to deploy our application to Vercel, which offers such an amazing developer experience, so you'd never ever imagine it. Take your popcorn and stay with me. So the easiest way to start our application will be to create the Next.js app and we can do this by opening the documentation and basically running this command in our command line. So Next.js is going to ask us how to call our project. So I think let's simply call it YALS, which stands for yet another link shortener. Now Next.js is going to install all required dependency to start up our application. Now Next.js is starting our development server and it's listening on port 3000 by default. So let's open this website. And our application is working. That's the welcome screen of um, default Next.js application. So now we can actually configure our application. So let's go back to console. Let's kill the server. And now we are going to convert our application from JavaScript into TypeScript by simply typing touch tsconfig.json. And now when we start the development server, Next.js will pick up this file and create a configuration for TypeScript for itself. Apparently I was wrong, so actually we need to install the TypeScript at first before actually we can use it. So let's simply copy this command and paste it. And now npm is going to install TypeScript and all required types basically to run our application. So now we need to wait. It is done. So now actually we can run the development server. So as you can see, Next actually detected that we wanted to convert this application into TypeScript and generated the TS uh, config file for us. So let's open this in the editor right now. So as you can see, the tsconfig has been filled with some information, basically how 
Next.js was going to transpile TypeScript code into JavaScript. We just simply need to rename all extensions of our files from JS into TypeScript. So let's do it. And now our application is converted. Now we need to restart the server because the file references are incorrect. And the server has been started on port 3000 again without an error. So, and it works. It is due time to take advantage out of ant design and hook it into our project. We can do this by pressing docs uh, using TypeScript. And now we see instruction will help us to configure in our project. So the configuration is so simple. We basically only need to install it and import one CSS file. So I will copy the dependency name and install it in our project. So now we have Andy in our project. Now we need to simply import it. And the instruction how to do this, we can find in our documentation. So basically, we simply need to just copy this into our, this line into our CSS file. So let's do it. And I'm going to copy it into the styles directory into uh, global.css files. I'm going to remove the existing content and just paste it and save. Let's run the server and check how it changed our application. As you can see, our application didn't change much, but we can actually make another test and try to use some components out of Andy. So let's remove the existing content and you put the Andy button on our website. So we can simply do it by opening index.ts file and let's remove default HTML. Let's save it. And let's see how it looks like. Actually, I just noticed that I didn't rename our file correctly. And it's supposed to be index.tsx instead of TS. So let's rename it. Let's save. And now let's see how our application looks like. So our application is empty and this is a good sign because we basically remove everything and we don't see any error. So now we can actually plot some Andy components. So let's open Andy documentation. Let's go to components. And let's plot the button. So now we see the documentation for the button component and let's select one of them. Let's take a primary button and we can basically copy the code by pressing this link. So now basically we are going to copy the button into our project. As you can see, there is red underline under the component name, which simply shows us that our editor couldn't find the button in this file. So we simply need to add its definition into the import. So let's add button from empty and save. Let's check how the website looks like. And that's how our website looks like. Now we can see this component from the documentation on our page. So it means that Andy actually works. And that's it for today. In the next episode, we are continue building our layout with Andy. So stay tuned, hit the like button and subscribe.
Thank you.